Father, we thank you for today's service. I ask you for your help. I ask you for a fresh anointing to be able to tell your people the good news. And I just thank you, Lord. We ask you for a fresh anointing upon your people's hearts and minds to receive the word, to draw upon the Holy Spirit in your word, to get exactly what they need today. We cover this service. We cover this property. We cover every heart, mind, and body in the blood of Jesus by the sound of my voice. And we thank you, Lord, that you are working within people's lives, that they are receiving the word and being set free and being blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, go ahead. Take a seat. And uh, today I, I want to talk to you uh, about the power of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. The power of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. Um, we've been talking about the love walk the past few weeks. And we're going to continue talking about that just a little bit. But um, I really want to talk to you about how important the Holy Spirit is in your love walk, in your life as a believer. Because without the Holy Spirit, without his indwelling presence, we have nothing. That's right. It is the Holy Spirit's grace and mercy that gives life and beauty to our spirit, our soul, and our body. He's the engine. He's the fuel that makes everything work in our life. And uh, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Say the third person of the Godhead. So he's just like Jesus in every single way. Uh, he thinks like Jesus. He hears from Jesus. And he lives within you to communicate to you Jesus' plan and purpose to you. And he, he's always with you. Okay? So let's go over to John 14. John, the 14th chapter. And let's go down to verse 15. I'm sorry. Let's go down to verse 6. And then we're going to go down to verse uh, 15. And 16. We're going to read these very quickly, okay? Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. So Jesus is the doorway into the very presence of Almighty God. For us to be born again, for us to receive God's holy presence and His Spirit, we have to believe on the name of Jesus. Right, he's the door. So just like you entered into this building, you had to go through doors, right, to get into this auditorium, to sit in this auditorium and to hear the word, to worship the Lord. You had to go through doors. Doors take you into places. And you want to go through the right doors in life. You don't want to go through the wrong doors. The wrong doors will lead you to the wrong people in the wrong places. But when you go through the right doors, when you make the right decision in your life, and you go through the right doors, things will be good. Amen. 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 So Jesus is the best door that you could have ever gone through into the, because he brings you into the very presence of Almighty God. Yes. You know, sometimes people say, well, I believe in God. You know, okay, well, there's many different types of God. There's a lot of gods out there. But do you believe in the God of Jesus Christ? Because he said, no man can come to the Father except but by me. Now let's go down to verse 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the commandment of love, right? We've been talking about keeping the commandment of love and how essential it is to our Christian faith, how essential it is to our experiences with Jesus. Verse 16, he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. Notice it says another. Anybody see that word, another? Another. So if you have, you know, you have pink shoes right here. I always pick on your shoes. But if you, you right now you're wearing those pink shoes. But I remember, I think you had some like leopard shoes a couple, I don't know, a couple months ago. You had some like crocodile shoes, different types of shoes. You know, you don't got your Crocs on tonight you, you, you got, or today. You got your nice blue cotton, you know, with a little leather on it. You got your pink shoes, but you have another pair of shoes. You guys have a few other pairs of shoes, right? <laughs> They're different though. They're different. They're not the same, right? Now, do you have any shoes? 
that are exactly the same. Does anybody have any shoes that are, ex you like, you know, you got your Jordans over here. Do you have any other, do you have a second pair of these just in case as a backup? No. Now this word another is, is exactly that, what I'm talking about here. If you were to buy a second pair of shoes, you would have an exact pair just like this one. You'd have another pair. It's exact in every single way. Well, that's, just, that's, that, that's what this word right here, another comforter, is talking about. Jesus is saying, listen, the Holy Spirit is another one just like me. I'm a comforter, and I'm sending you another one just like me. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm going to send you my very spirit, and I'm going to breathe him into you so that you are alive with me all the time. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't live in your head. He doesn't live in your body per se. He lives in your spirit. So he goes, Jesus goes, everything I am, the Holy Ghost will be to you. You just won't be able to see him. You won't be able to talk to him like a human person, you know, in flesh and blood. But you will be able to experience him in the spirit. And he goes, he will abide with you for how long? So the Holy Spirit will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. So how long is the Holy Spirit with you for? How long is the, another comforter with you for? These shoes are temporary. You have, you know, if you had another pair of shoes just like this, they're all temporary. They're going to fade. They're going to be ruined. They're going, you can't wear those for a thousand years. They're going to get ruined eventually. Or they're going to break down eventually. But the Holy Ghost is eternally with you. He doesn't break down. He doesn't give up. He doesn't quit. He's not going to quit on you. He's, going to, he's there to continually empower you to do what God has called you to do individually, but then also to live the Christian life. Okay? Now verse 7 says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, verse 7, or is that, no, no, it would be the second part of verse 6, I'm sorry. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see the Holy Spirit, does not know the Holy Spirit, but you, who knows the Holy Ghost? For he lives with you and shall be. Now here's the thing. How many of you can honestly say you have a heart, like a physical blood pump in your chest right now? 17 of you, great. Wow. So what do you have in there? Like for the rest of you, what is going on in your chest? Again, how many of you say, I have a physical blood pump? Blood good. All right, good. Now, where is your heart? It's inside your body. How many of you, with all honesty, can say, I have a brain? <laughs> now, have any of you ever seen your brain or seen your heart? No. But you know it's in you. That's right. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. You know him, for he lives in you. Amen. And he shall be in you. In other words, Jesus is, in verse 8, he goes, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to come to you and be with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen? So say, I know the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit. He, lives in me. he lives in me. I have the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. He comforts me. He's just like Jesus in every way, shape, and fashion. And I can trust the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now let's go over to Romans, the eighth chapter, real quick. And let's look at verse uh, 14. And let's look at, let's just look at verse 14 very quickly.
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the who? All right. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the? So how do you know that you're a son of God? Because you're led by the Spirit of God. Of God. When you have the promptings, the intuitions in here, in your spirit, you have peace about certain things. That's the Holy Ghost saying that's the right way to go. When you're with people or with your, you're with things or you're, you're dealing with issues in your life and something just feels off in your spirit, something doesn't feel right, that's the leading of the Holy Ghost warning you about the future. Don't go down that road. Don't go through that door. Don't go with that person. Don't get into that car. Don't go to that place. The Holy Spirit. And every single one of you has the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, and you know Him. So don't ever say, I can't hear from God. I don't know God. I don't know what He's telling me. Yes, you do. You just have to get quiet. Say quiet. Quiet. And just put your mind on your belly. That's it. And And God will give you peace about things that are right. Or he will give you warnings about things that are wrong. Say, peace means good. good. Warnings mean, or or, uh, uh, say, discomfort Discomfort. in my spirit spirit is a warning. warning. Okay? So the Holy Ghost is with you. He is in you. He's never going to leave you. You know him, and you are led by his spirit. You just have to treat him like he's a real person. But you just can't see him. He's not an imaginary friend. He's a real friend. You just can't see him. Now, the thing about this is Satan is always vying and fighting for your attention throughout the entire day because he doesn't want you to keep your focus on what God has said over your life through his written word, and he sure enough doesn't want you to be led by the Holy Ghost throughout the day. Because you, do you know what's going to happen if you're led by the Holy Ghost throughout the day and you honor the leading of the Holy Ghost and you obey him? You're going to become rich. You're going to stay healthy and wealthy. You're going to stay protected. You're going to be at peace. You're going to have soundness of mind. You're going to have fulfillment in your spirit. You're not going to be searching for anyone to fulfill you. You're just going to have the indwelling presence of God filling you up continually And you're going to have a good life. You're going to walk in God's perfect plan for your life. You're not going to miss out on what he has planned for you specifically. Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans and purposes that I have for you. They're good. They're not to hurt you. I want to prosper you. I want to help you. You can hear from God. You can be led by God. And you are in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Satan is always vying for your attention because he knows if he can get your attention off of Jesus, off of what the Holy Ghost and off of what the Word of God is telling you to do, then he can get you off God's course. Um, recently, the, or this past week, my wife and I, we went up to Ocala to visit with Evangelist Ankit. And anybody remember Evangelist Ankit here? Oh, yeah. Okay, so he, he, we, we know he got his tent. He got that circus tent, the beautiful tent, and he had his first crusade in Ocala this past week. I think the first night he had like 1,600 people show up, and of course, there's signs, wonders, and miracles everywhere, and it was just an amazing time. And, um, but at the end of Tuesday night service, we visited with him and some pastor friends uh, that, that he knows, and one of his good friends, his name's Pastor Alex from Orlando, uh, he has a church up there, a river church in Orlando, and he gave us a story about the power of covenant and honor and loyalty and walking in the love of God. Now, we've been talking about the love of God for like the past three weeks, right? And how it affects our health and how it affects our life, but it also affects our prosperity. And so, Pastor Alex goes like this. He goes, I I have a kid that he came to our church about four, four years ago. He was 20 years old. And when he came to the first service on a Sunday morning, he was whacked out. 
Like he had, he was just messed up mentally. He was, he was just completely in love with the world. But then he came to the service. Of course, he got born again. He got set free. I mean, he got delivered supernaturally by the power of Jesus. And he goes, when, the, when I saw the young man, the Lord spoke to me and said, he needs to be your armor bearer, Alex, and you're going to train him how to walk in loyalty and covenant and the love of God because I have a call of business upon his life and he's going to make, he's going to make a lot of money for the kingdom's purpose. So this young man, he took him under his wing for you know, a year or so and all he did was teach him this. The covenant that he has with God, the covenant that he has to his church, the covenant that he has to his pastor, the covenant that he has to the Holy Ghost, and how that operates. He, he invested in him about the love of God, how we are to love one another, and how God blesses unity amongst us, and how we need to keep not only the faith, but we have to keep unity and love amongst one another. And he goes, we need to be loyal. He taught him about loyalty, how to be faithful and not quit and not give up. And he goes, I just kept on feeding him this, feeding him this. Well, within four years, this kid took these messages on loyalty, love, and covenant, and God turned him into a multimillionaire and has given him multi-businesses. Like, he doesn't just have one business. Like, the kid's 24 years old, and he's a multi-millionaire. But when you saw him first, he was, I mean, his hair was, was, was purple and, you know, he, he had no purpose in life. He didn't know what was going on. Satan had a hold of him. But then he got born again, set free, and then he was taught how to walk in the love of God. Let's go over to John, the 14th chapter. Let's go back to John 14 and let's go to verse 20 or 21. Because I, I just want to get through a couple of these things today. Verse 21, it says, He that has my commandments and keeps them. What's the command? Love. Love. If you keep my commandment of love, you really love me, Jesus says, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now, verse 21 in the Amplified Classic says, I too will love you. I will show, reveal, and manifest myself to you. I will let myself be clearly seen by you and make myself real to you. What's the key to walking in great manifestations of Jesus' presence in your life. If Jesus walks into your house, if Jesus walks into your business, if Jesus walks into your kitchen, if Jesus walks into your, exor your exercise time, what do you think Jesus is going to do? What do you, when Jesus walks into a room, what happens? Miracles. He changes things. He turns water into wine. He raises the dead. He, he, he walks on water. He gives sight to the blind. He feeds the 20,000 supernaturally with just a few loaves and a few fishes. When Jesus walks into your life, he changes everything. The key to walking with Jesus is this, walk in love. The more you walk in love, the more Jesus will become real to you. Walk in love with God. Walk in love with yourself. There's a lot of people, they don't love themselves. You have to love yourself. You have to be merciful and gracious with yourself. Walk in love with other people. You say, well, pastor, then they might run me over. <laughs> let them run you over. I'm telling you, Jesus. let them run you over. Turn the other cheek. Don't fight with your enemies. Don't fight with people that have problems with you. Just walk 
and love. Pray for your enemies. Do good to those that curse you. Give to those that don't like you. Walk in love. They wanted to throw Jesus off of a cliff in his own hometown because they didn't like him as being the Messiah, the anointed one. They didn't like him being the one that was going to change Jerusalem and tra- change the world. And so his family, his own family, wanted to th- took him to the top of a cliff and wanted to throw him off the cliff so that he would die. You know what Jesus did? He didn't retaliate. He didn't speak against them. He didn't rebuke them. He just disappeared. He walked. They have a hold of Jesus. Like they're holding on to him. They're pushing him towards the cliff. Somehow, supernaturally, as he was walking in love, he was able to supernaturally walk away from their physical grip. You cannot fail in life when you walk in love because God will always protect you. But Satan is after that love walk. He knows if I got your love walk, I can keep you from being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because it's hard to hear from God when you're in strife. It's hard to hear from God when you're fighting and you're tense and you're depressed. Or you're holding on to unforgiveness. No, get rid of all of that stuff. Get your heart right with the Lord and just say, all right, I'm going to walk in love. And the more I walk in love, the more Jesus will become real to me. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? Okay, now, I don't know how much more time I'm going to stay on this because, you know, this is, this is a message that... Uh, it might take a couple, a couple teachings. But I want, I want to, let me just end with this, because I'm not going to keep you much longer, okay? Um, so my wife and I, when we were coming back from Ocala on Wednesday, and you're driving down I-4, you're driving down the turnpike, there's all these billboards, and these billboards are vying for your attention, Some of them are are just weird. You know, like there's golf courses, but that's normal. You have the villages up there. You have a lot of, I mean, the villages is booming. You know, anybody know what the villages is? It's where everybody goes to retire in the state of Florida. It's like high school for seniors. what, What it is. It's like people have worked. Now they're gonna retire going to do some crazy stuff. And uh, that's where Evangelist Ankit wanted to have, I guess, his crusade, I think, was close to the villages because, you know, sometimes older people have issues too. They need Jesus. Um, So as we're driving down, I'm, I'm looking at these billboards. Some of them are very, very naughty billboards, you know? And it's crazy what you see driving down the road. And here I am, and, and I had already been coming to my mind the past couple weeks, but Satan is always fighting for your attention. Whether it is media, billboards, advertising, whether it is... You know, just driving down the road and you're trying to get to work and something goes off on your phone. Satan is always vying for your focus and attention. And behind those temptations to get your eyes off of Jesus is a spirit, a demonic spirit that's trying to put pressure upon you to draw you in to taking your eyes off of Jesus. Because he understands, if I just get my eyes off of Jesus and get my eyes on the world and on the problems and on the temptations and on the issues, 
And it doesn't even have to be naughty. It's just things that distract you. Take your time away from Jesus. If he can just distract you, then he can kind of put pressure on you to stop trusting Jesus. You remember Peter? Yeah. Peter was in that boat. Yep. Peter was in that boat, and, and, and everything wasn't going too well, and there were storms all around him, and, and, but then they all of a sudden, they see what looks like a ghost walking on the water. Walking on the water. Jesus is able to walk on the water like we walk on the floor. That's absurd. That's supernatural. That's not normal. As he's walking upon the water, they go, who are you? Who is that? Is that a ghost? And Jesus goes, no, it's me, your master and your Lord. Well, Peter, he goes, Jesus, if that is you, then bid me to come out of this boat. Give me a word that I can walk on, that I can trust, that I can mix my faith in. And then I will walk on the water as well, and I'll come out to you. Now notice what Peter said. He goes, I need a word first from you, Jesus. I need a word because the word of God is the power of God. It's the faith of God. It's, it's the substance that was going to support Peter as he walked on that water. And that word has all the power in it to bring itself to pass. But all it's looking for is somebody to believe it. So Peter received this word. He goes, I need a word. Jesus gave him the word. He goes, I'm going to step out of that boat. Can you imagine? <laughs> like, what, what do you do? Like, 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 did he just pop out of the boat? Like, you kind of wonder what was going through Peter's mind. What what was, that works. There's Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lord. He puts another foot on the water. And we don't know how far away he was from Jesus, but we do know this. Peter was walking on the water just like Jesus. And he was keeping his eyes. What was the key? He kept his eyes on Jesus. He received the word. He asked God, for, he asked Jesus for the word. He received the word. He put his faith in the word. He acted upon the word like it was so. But then what was the culmination? What was, what, what was going to bring his faith in that word to pass? What was going to bring it to completion? Just keep your eyes You don't know what to do. Keep your eyes on Jesus. But what happened to Peter? He looked to the left. He looked to the right. He saw the waves. He saw the wind. He felt it. He saw the rain. And then he got into fear because he put his focus and his attention on the wrong thing. One second he's walking on the water, the next second he's sinking because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And Jesus came up to him and he said, Peter, in essence, this is what he said. He goes, you just needed to keep your eyes on me. You just had to keep your focus on me, Peter. And you would have walked on the water. And you know what? We would have walked all the way to the shore together. Satan's always vying for your attention. And he's going to use natural things. He's going to use natural problems. Natural advertisements to try to steal your attention. So what do you need to do when you don't even know what to do? 
<laughs> and and then what I'm saying is, you received a word from God for your healing. You received a word from God for your finances. You received the word of God for your family. You received the word of God for your miracle. You mixed your faith in it. You stepped out of the boat and you said, I'm, going, I'm walking with you, Jesus. It may not look like anything's going to happen. It may not look like anything's going to come to pass, but I trust you. I'm going to declare your word. I trust you. I don't feel like it, but by your stripes, I'm healed and I'm made whole. It doesn't look like it, but I'm dead free. It doesn't look like it, but I'm restored in my mind. It doesn't feel like it, Lord, but everything is restored in my life. And then the enemy comes with some waves and with the wind, and he comes with the pressures of life, and he's trying to distract you. And you go, I fought, I fought what is left to be done. Keep your eyes. Your attention, your ability to sit here in this service today and to be able to listen to me is actually a gift from God. And Jesus told his disciples in Mark chapter 4, he said, be careful what you give your attention to. Be careful what you're focusing on. Be careful. And the life of faith is so simple. It's really simple. Keep your attention on Jesus. And you're not going to lose. You will not fail. You will not miss out on God's best for your life. But he will bring to pass the very desires of your heart. You're not going under, you're going over. You're not going under like Peter, you're going over. You're going to walk on the water. <laughs> You're going to go through that storm, and you're going to come out better than ever. I don't care if it's the midnight hour of your life. I don't care if it looks like you are in chains to the enemy. Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. They didn't lose their focus. They didn't lose their attention on Jesus. They were chained up. They were ready. They thought everything looks in the natural. We're about to die for Jesus tonight. Tomorrow we're going to the butchering block. But then Paul and Silas just said, eh, let's put our eyes on Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. For you are the Lamb of God. You are worthy. You are worthy of all of our praise and adoration. You are worthy of all blessing and honor and praise and glory and power and dominion and kingdoms upon kingdoms and eternity. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You were there in creation and before creation, and you'll be there when the new heavens and the earths are created. You have been here before we were ever born, and you will be here when we are in heaven. Amen. For you are the king of kings. You are the one that is in control. You are the one with all power and might. You set people in authority, and you take them out. You are the God of all ages. You are the ancient of days. You are the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. You are the fourth man in the fire. You are the blood of our redemption. You are the water walker, and you cause us to walk on water with you. We praise you in this storm today. We praise you in this storm today, because you shall deliver us in the name of Jesus. And as Paul and Silas began to praise the Lord and began to sing praises unto his wonderful name, 
the power of God. Angels, the power of the third person of the Holy Ghost began to saturate the ground. The mighty hand of God began to shake the building, began to shake the ground. And a mighty earthquake took place where the chains that were on Paul and Silas's body fell off without any natural key. And the shackles that kept them bound, they were, they walked right up, they got right up out of them. And that wasn't it. The door to the prison cell opened up with no man's help, just God's help. Paul and Silas, they walked out. The Lord delivered us. And then that soldier, that soldier, he, he was looking at Paul and Silas. Everybody was going crazy. All the soldiers were going, what on earth is happening? Oh my goodness, we can't lose these men. That one soldier said, I'm dead in the morning. Paul and Silas said, you're coming with us, buddy. You don't know it, but you're the next pastor of this church that we're starting in this city. Come on. Paul and Silas received their deliverance, but then their mind was still on the plan and the purpose of God. Souls. Paul and Silas were like, I didn't come to this city to just be thrown in prison and to get out. I came to this city to go into prison, get out supernaturally, and build a church. Your days are not over. Your days are not over in the name of Jesus. The best is yet to come for you and your household in the name of Jesus. So I see you walking on the water with Jesus. I see chains coming off of your life. I see prison doors opening. And I see you doing the perfect plan of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Just go ahead, bow your heads right now, close your eyes. And if you're in this place today, I want to give you an opportunity to know my Savior and my Lord, my friend, Jesus. Maybe you don't know him today. Maybe you've never called upon the name of Jesus. But the Bible says, whoever calls upon his great name shall be saved. It says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. That word saved means not only delivered out of spiritual death and brought into eternal life, but it also means healed in your body. It means a turnaround in your finances. It means health and restoration for your mind. It means preservation and protection for your body and for your life. It means you're going to begin to walk in miracle signs and wonders instead of just having an ordinary average human life on this earth. So salvation is not just eternal life, but it's every blessing of God. So if that's you today, you go, I need Jesus. I'm in this place and the Lord is just talking to me. I just want you with eyes closed, heads bowed. Can you just raise your hand for me right now? If you just sense in your spirit, man, I got to give my life to Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Thank you for your boldness. Thank you for your love for the Lord. Anyone else? Raise your hand high for me. Well, for Jesus. I see that hand in the back. Thank you so much. I see that hand over there. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Lord of Lords. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your sweet, holy presence. 
All right. If that's you, if you raised your hand, can you please stand up for us? Can you please just stand up? You can open your eyes and lift your heads. Go ahead, stand up. Make that bold commitment. If you raised your hand, please stand up. Make that bold commitment. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar. And just gather your belongings and come to the front here. The Bible says, if you confess Jesus before men, He'll confess you before the Father. So it's a very, very important thing for you to just confess. Just come right over here. Stand right there. Thank you so much, guys. Stand right there. Yeah, can you just put that right over there for me? Or, or give it to Guy. Give it to Guy. Thank you. Bless you. It's so good to have you. Just facing this way, guys. Facing this way. We'll give him just a few more moments. Give him a round of applause. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. Well, have your, your sons in the back. Okay. Does he want to come up here, bring your belongings? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Would you, you want to go get him and bring him to the front? Okay. Bring your belongings as well, okay? Hey, man. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to wait for her. Let me just shake all of your hands. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Bless you. Bless you. Love you. A good man. Bless you. Love you. He's a good man. You're a good woman. <laughs> just lift your hands to the Lord. Close your eyes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, Mama. All right. Well, with eyes closed and hands lifted high to the Lord, just say this. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you died for me, that you're raised again from the dead. I believe you are my Savior, my Lord, my healer, my baptizer in the Holy Ghost, my provider, my life changer. I declare that your blood has washed me clean. I am in the redeemed of the Lord. I am a child of God. God is my very own Father, and from this day forward, I walk in God's perfect will for my life, in the name of Jesus. I want you to say this. Say, I take authority over you, Satan. I break your power off of my life. You can't have my destiny. I, in the name of Jesus, cover my life in the precious blood of the Lamb. I am free, I am whole, I am sound, and I'm walking in victory. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Let us keep your eyes closed with your hands lifted. Now Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these precious, precious hearts and minds that have come into your kingdom today, or those that have come back home to you. We now surround them with the lightnings of heaven, the thunders of your mighty hand. Thank you for protecting them, keeping them, safeguarding them. Thank you that nothing shall ever be able to snatch them out of your hand in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you 
that these are your kids. This is your family. And I thank you, Lord, for supernaturally adjusting things in their life from this moment forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, things begin to change. Things begin to shake. Things begin to adjust in their life by your hand and by your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now just look at, look at me real quick. Look up here. From this day forward, things are different. From this day forward, things are different. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. From this day forward, things are different. Hallelujah. Amen. We are so glad that you have announced your faith to Christ. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is I have Miss Adassa right over here in the white sweater. I'm going to ask you to go back to your seats, get your belongings, and just go. Miss Adassa is going to be waiting at that white door over there, the right door where it says exit. Please follow her to the prayer room. She just wants to pray with you real quickly and just give you some information. We can get some contact information from you, okay? And just go back there. She's a great woman of God, and she's going to take good care of you, okay? Bless you guys. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Again. Love you. Love you.